Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Gene Crane in Alice McKay's They Came to a River on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars and outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present Alice McKay's They Came to a River, a brave story about brave people, a love story of people who also love their land. You know, when we talk of the pioneers who built up the West, we generally call to mind our forefathers, but in the story we tell tonight, many of our characters might still be living. So recent was the settling of the great Pacific Northwest along the banks of the Upper Columbia. This was the river that the people of our story came to less than a lifetime ago. And those of us who today explore its beauties so easily can imagine the thrill of finding it the gateway to a promised land. In our principal role tonight, we are fortunate to have with us that delightful actress, Miss Jean Crane. And now a word about Hallmark Cards from Frank Goss before we begin the first act of They Came to a River. There's a way to have a good neighbor policy all your own, the Hallmark way. For Hallmark cards are as neighborly as lending a cup of sugar or visiting the new folks on the block. Whether you choose Hallmark cards for people right around the corner or miles away, whether for friends or loved ones, they always give those that receive them a pleasant glow. When remembered on birthdays, weddings, anniversaries, holidays, any and all days. And that identifying Hallmark on the back carries a message all its own. It says you cared enough to send the very best. Now, Hallmark Playhouse, presenting They Came to a River, starring Gene Crane. Oh, Chris, this mountain. Look down below, all around you. Look at that land, those trees. You've only been here a week, Nate. It's lonely and... Lonely? No, Chris. All my life I've lived in a big city. But in my dreams I was never there. And Dad? For 25 years he ran a business in Boston. But in his dreams he owned a piece of land in the West that he worked and farmed. And now we've got it, Chris. We've got it. Where are you going to get the water from, Nate? There's only a little stream on your property. How much can you grow with so little water? There's the water. The Columbia River. Dad and I will pump it out of the river with a steam boiler. That is, when we earn enough money to buy one. Chris, what do you want out of life? Funny. I've lived in this lonesome valley all my life, and I've always hated it. Ever since I was a little girl, I, I dreamed of living in a big city, having an exciting sort of life, and being mysterious and wonderful. And having lots of beautiful gowns and having men fall in love with me. Lots of men. Even if I'd always be true to just one in my heart. If you take an old map and follow the settled country to where the Columbia River crosses it and then move your finger slowly up the valley, you'll see the towns fade out, railroads disappear, there's nothing on the map but space. It was in the year 1906 that Nate, in all the hopefulness of youth, came to the river to find the answer to his dreams. Six months had passed since that day on the mountain, and already he had found bitter cold, the dust, the storms, the heat, and the fire, the fire. Where's your brother, Nate? I don't know, Chris, I don't know. Have some coffee. Why don't we let these filthy trees burn? I'm sick of this country. I never wanted to come here in the first place. I hate it as much as you do, Chris. I guess you do. 
but there's nothing we can do about it. Look at my father over there. He has no business up here right now. This is the time of his life when he ought to be resting instead of working. He's not a well man. I've tried to stop him. You can't stop a runaway horse, Raj. Yeah. Especially when they have dreams. I tell you, if I ever leave here alive, I'm going back to Boston and civilization. Hey, where are you going, Chris? To see your father. Mr. Barton. Oh, hello, Chrissy. It sure is a fire, isn't it? Bet you never saw one like this back east, did you? No. Here, why don't you sit down and have some of this coffee? Oh, we young fellows don't need coffee. Besides, there's a wind coming up. Can't take the time. Have you seen Nate? No, not today. I... He's all right, Chris. Well, well, of course he is. Oh, Nate knows how to look out for himself. Sure. We're well, sure he does. Marge, the fire's spreading. You'll have to go closer in. you got to keep going. He can't go on. He's all in. It's all right, Chris. I think it's easier to keep going than to get started again. Chris, you've got to go to the village and get word to have more men and supplies sent here right away. I, I can't. I've got to find Nate. Josie Bealey's ready to go along with you. But Nate, Nate's missing. Where is Tom, Josie's husband? Chris, I'm sorry, Josie. Come on, Chris. There's work for us to do. <laughs> Josie is, is being married wonderful. Thinking about Nate? Oh, I, I can't think about anything else. I think about him all the time. It's sort of nice to have somebody to think about, isn't it? Oh, it's lovely. You know, I, I used to make up things. When I cared for anybody, I, I thought of things. All oh, but now that the real things are enough. Just to sit beside him. Just to be near him. Yes, it's like that. I'm happy for you, Chris. I'm so glad. But supposing he doesn't feel the same way about me. I'm, I mean, maybe it's all just in my mind. Maybe I'm, I'm just being silly. It doesn't matter. It isn't silly, Chris. Loving somebody isn't silly. Even if he never even looked at you. Just, just feeling it yourself is enough. Almost. Oh, it's the most wonderful thing in the world. It's like you found a reason for everything. A reason for being alive. Oh, Josie, I, I know I'll see Nate again. And again. All I have to do now is wait and, and know in my heart he'll be all right. You're so young, Chris. It begins so soon. And it keeps you on the rack till you die. Love. Loving somebody. God help you if you don't love somebody. And God help you if you do. Mrs. Barnes, I... I... How oh, is Nate? He's in bed. Still kind of groggy from the fire. Oh. A and Mr. Barnes? Not too good, but he insisted on getting up this morning. Will you, will you tell Nate I was here? Make her come in, Mother. There you are, Chris. Oh, thanks. Nate? Sit down beside me. As soon as I could walk, I was coming to see you. I, oh, Chris. Were you, Nate? Well, didn't you think I would? I didn't know. Oh, look at you, all those bandages. You were pretty wonderful in the mountain. Well, we did stop the fire, didn't we? Chris, there's something important I've got to tell you. Yes? When we sell our apple crop, Dad and I figure we'll have enough money to buy the steam boiler. You know what that means? I, I think I do. All the happiness you've ever wanted. All. Far from all. There's you, Chris. Chris, marry me. <gasps> oh, Oh, Nate. I love you so. I love you so terribly. Darling. Oh, you know, I, I didn't know there was anybody like you. I couldn't really believe it when I found you. I sort of kept rubbing my eyes and thinking, he'll go away. When I look again, he won't be there. Oh, Nate, I'm so happy. I'll never go away. You couldn't even chase me away. Nate. What's the matter? I'm going to make the most beautiful wedding dress you've ever seen. Something soft and lovely with a little cap embroidered. <laughs> and there'll be no orange blossoms. For our sake, there'll be apple blossoms. I 
I'm sorry, Mrs. Barnes, but as a doctor, I must tell you your husband is a very sick man. He needs lots of rest and proper hospitalization. He must go back east. His aged dad was a fool to come out here and try to battle this wilderness. I was against it right from the beginning. He and Nate were their dreams. Oh, Nate, let's go back home. Let's take him away from here. We'll sell this place. Dad, giving up ranching. This was all too late for him. Twenty-five years he's waited. And now, too late. Nate. Oh, Nate, how is your father? Oh, a little better today, Chris, but... Still awfully weak. Chris, all our plans. What are we to do? Do? Only one thing to do. What's best for him. He's the one that, that counts now. Poor Dad. Every time Mother talks of selling the ranch, he almost cries. You ever seen a grown man cry, Chris? Oh, why did all this have to happen? Why? Things were going along so fine. Please, we're young. We can wait. No matter where you go or, or for how long, I can wait. Chris, I don't want to leave you. I don't want to leave you here. I... Chris, my father's been asking for you. Would you go in and see him now? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Chris, child. Is it you? Yes. Man's got a right to have a dream come true. Even if it's through his son. Please, don't tire yourself. You have to rest, you know. I... I haven't told anyone else yet, Chris, but... I won't sell the ranch. I want Nate to stay here. I want him to have it. Oh. Will you marry my boy right away, Chris? He needs you here with him. Yes, yes. Today, if you wish. Yeah. And we'll take good care of the ranch and the trees and... Oh, we'll do everything just the way you would. Anyhow, the best we can. You don't have to worry. As soon as you feel all right or... Or whenever you want to, you'll come back and... It'll be waiting for you. Always. Oh, good girl. Good girl. Now, going back to Nate, I, I think I'll sleep a little. I can now. Nate. Oh, Nate. I heard, Chris, darling. Oh, I'm so proud of you. It'll be hard in the beginning. We only have this house and the money from the crop. Well, Dad's going to need every cent of that. Well, the steam boiler will just have to work. It'll work out, Nate. Everything. I know it will. Chris, I love you. Some girls have the luck. All of it. Oh, darling. Oh, gosh, Chris. What about your trousseau? All the beautiful things you wanted. You know, I, I can get those any time. They, they weren't going to be so much anyhow. In just a moment, we'll return to the second act of They Came to a River, starring Gene Crane. More and more often these days, I hear people saying, isn't it a small world? Usually, they're talking about the pleasant, unexpected revival of an almost forgotten friendship. And it occurs to me every time I hear of one of these accidental meetings that there is a way to keep friendships fresh and alive all the time with Hallmark cards. You see, Hallmark has a good neighbor policy all its own. There's a Hallmark card to express your feelings on any occasion. Those who create Hallmark cards know that a warm hello, a hearty birthday greeting, or your sincere sympathy when it's needed must be said in the way you want to say it. 
That's why you'll always find the very one to express your thoughts. To friends, to loved ones, to everyone you know. And each card is perfection in color and design. That's why, when you ask your friends what name they think of in greeting cards, when they want to send the very best, you'll find, as I have, that they quickly answer Hallmark cards. So it's easy to remember, it would be difficult to forget, to look for that one and only Hallmark on the back of every card you choose. It says you care enough to send the very best. Now here is James Hilton with the second act of They Came to a River, starring Gene Crane. <laughs> The little house on the Barnes Ranch was now occupied by Chris and Nate. Autumn was upon them, the mountain autumn of knife-sharp air. Pipes in the orchard had to be drained to keep them from freezing. The cow in her barn lowed complainingly against the cold. Chris and Nate had just celebrated their first anniversary. Look at the orchard, the trees, how much they've grown. Yeah. When we're rich enough to afford the steam boiler, we'll have three times as many. The deer are running. When you get a skin, I'm going to tan it and work it. I want to send your father a deer skin jacket for Christmas. I want to send him something every year. Something from the place here that he... That... Well, you know, something that grew here. Oh, that's swell, Chris. You'll make him a very happy man. Nate, there's something else I... I don't exactly know how to tell you. You needn't, darling. I already know. You know what? Oh, Chris. I knew days ago that you were going to have a baby. Oh, Nate. I can hardly wait. It's funny. I, I can't even think how it would feel not to be expecting a baby. Chris, you'd better go and see the doctor right away. If anything should happen to you... Oh, nothing's going to happen to me. We're just going to have a baby, that's all. Here we are, Chris. You remember this mountain, don't you? Yes, it's where we first met. Ah, it's the most important place in my life. It's where my world began. It's brought me everything I've asked for. And it's going to be just as lucky for my son. I never knew you were superstitious, man. Oh, I am about this. You remember when the coddling moth attacked our orchard? I came up here to this very spot and prayed. It worked, didn't it, Chris? I guess it did. And I prayed for a son up here. And we have Carl. There's meaning to it, Chris. I... I guess it's more than I understand. But it's here that I want to dedicate my son... To the earth and the trees and the sky. Look, Nate. Carl, he just opened his eyes. He's awake. I, it's as if he heard every word you said and, and understood. Yeah. I feel as if suddenly some kind of mysterious spell has been cast over all three of us. And it's a good one, Chris. I waited until we got up here to tell you. We've struck it. We've got the world by the tail. I sold our crop of apples for a fancy price. And you know where I'm going when I leave here, Chris? You know what I'm going to do? You're going to Wenatchee and order the steam boy. Why, we'll be millionaires in five years. Oh, Nate. Suddenly, I feel something terribly wrong. Maybe you shouldn't leave tonight. The road's still blocked this side of the ferry. You'd, you'd have to go over the mountain. Well, Chris, what difference would it make if I went tomorrow? The road would still be blocked. I like to ride at night, Chris. I get a wonderful feeling. You won't do as I say, will you? Now, look, hon. Come over here. Oh, golly, I'm a lucky fella. Imagine having a wonderful wife like you to worry about me. Honest, darling, I won't take any unnecessary chances. I guess you know what's best. You wouldn't sleep tonight anyhow, worrying about that old steam boiler. Josie, I, I'm going to be silly again. I, I'm so worried about Nate. He should have been back from Wenatchee long before this. He's a man, Chris. There's no accounting for their time when they're on the loose. 
My Tom's in Wenatchee, too. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if they're tooting up the town together. And Tom could have been back yesterday. What? Oh, I guess I am a fool. Why? Did I put enough eggs into this batter? Well, I can't say. You've been dropping them in like hotcakes while we were talking. Maybe we ought to count the eggshells, huh? <laughs> oh, I'll be that Nate. No, Nate would knock on the door. Josie? Hey, Tom, how did you know I was here? Well, I... Tom, is Nate with you? Chris, Nate... Nate's not with me. Josie, could I... Outside, please. Did you see him in Wenatchee? Yes. What's wrong, Tom? Chris. Chris. Nate won't be back. He. he oh, Chris. Chris, dear. I've known it for days. There was a rock slide, Chris. Chris, Chris just leave me alone. And first, struggled the creeping cold the wind. Point grounding you to stay alive. Oh, Nate. Nate. Let the worms take the orchard. Let the buildings decay. It'd be easy. So easy to follow, Nate. There must be ways. People do it. My life is here. <laughs> hardly even said goodbye. Why, Josie? Why? Who is there to answer the whys of the world? It's God's will. And why didn't he take me to? We had so much together. Now, there's nothing. There's your son, Carl. Oh, Chris, hold on tight. There's so much you have to do now. There's everything. You can do it. You are brave. Nate would be so proud of you. I make no promises, Josie. I make no promises. <laughs> you and the boy. These last few weeks haven't been easy, but we'll be all right. Chris. Yes? The family wants you and Carl to come back to Boston. Live with us. Raj, that's very kind, but we couldn't do that. Oh, if you're worrying about being dependent, well, you could probably get some sucker to buy the ranch. Oh, really, you owe it to your son to take him away from here. Honey, I can help. I can afford to give him advantages of private school, college. I'd take him as far as he wants to go. And friends, the right people, a desirable standing in society. All the things he never could get here. I don't know. Maybe he was meant to be a pioneer. Like his father. How about you, Chris? You're a young woman. Once you dreamed of living in a big city, of leaving this wilderness, there's no reason for you to stay here any longer. Let others pioneer for what it's worth. There's no satisfaction in developing a wilderness that pays you back with cruelty. For your way of thinking, Rod, you're right. Of course I am. Think of all those times that Nate grubbed and watered and plowed and harrowed and sprayed. All those nights he sat beside that lamp and figured and worried how he was going to make ends meet. But he was happy. Happy as only a man can be doing the things he loved. Look what it did to my father. And it killed Nate. But they had a reason, both of them. If they could do it over again, it would still be their choice. I don't understand you, Chris. I know I was bitter, Rog. I, I couldn't find a reason to go on. I was going to run away, but I found out you can't run away from yourself. I've had plenty of time to think, and I know now I feel the same way Nate did about things. Maybe it's because being married to him and loving him, his ways became mine. Chris, please, listen it's to me. It's no use, Rog. From the day Carl was born... Nate planned that someday everything we had here, the ranch, the orchards, the, the land, would belong to our son. But how do you know it's what the boy will want? Oh, I don't. Remember when you were 13 or, or 14 or 16? It seemed all at once you belonged to yourself and nobody else. 
that life was almost too short to do all the things you suddenly wanted to. Oh, I remember it very well. When it happens to Carl, I think I can tell. And if he wants to leave here, nothing shall stand in his way. But we owe it to Nate to find out if his son will choose to work the land or leave it. Well, Chris, I guess there's nothing more I can say except to wish you the best. It's going to mean a lot of hard work. Don't worry. I guess I can still roll up my sleeves. I've seen them all come. The young, the old, the weak, the strong. Men with fortunes, men with empty hands. They came to the river, and the river shaped their lives. It was a sign set by God in this wilderness, and, and they followed it and were content. So will it be for me, Raj. So will it be for me. Dean Crane and James Hilton will return in a moment. You know, every once in a while, you and I are given a golden opportunity to make up for forgotten duties, to show our love and gratitude to a special person in a special way. Just such an opportunity is coming up for all of us in a short time. Mother's special day will be here soon. Yes, Mother's Day, May 14th, is only two and a half weeks away. I'm mentioning it now because I'm sure you'll want to make your selection early while you have your choice of all the Hallmark cards for Mother's Day. However you want to express your feelings, you'll find a card that's just right. From amusing, affectionate ones to flower-laden cards so deeply loving they'll have a special significance to Mother the whole year through. And there are cards to Mother and Father to let Dad share the day. Cards for Grandmother and Mother-to-be. Cards for every mother on Mother's Day. And you can be sure a Hallmark card has the very words to say for you, whatever you have in your heart. The things you may find hard to say the way you would like to say it. So don't forget, stop in tomorrow at the friendly store where you find Hallmark cards. Be sure to look for the Hallmark that carries an added meaning. It says you cared enough to send the very best. Here again is James Hilton. That was a grand performance, Jim Crane. That was a grand story, Mr. Hilton. And Chris was a wonderful character to portray. You know, Jean, this story leaves me with the impression of really great-hearted people quick to help one another and finding great joy in it. You've put my very thoughts into just the right words, Mr. Hilton. A talent shared with Hallmark cards, I think, but they certainly have a way with words. And uh, now, Mr. Hilton, what have you selected for next week? Next week, we shall present our dramatization of one of the great plays of our time, Victoria Regina by Lawrence Houseman, a play about the life of the great queen. And for our star, we will have that fine Hollywood actress, Joan Fontaine. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our director-producer is Bill Gay. Our music was composed and conducted by Lynn Murray. And our script tonight was adapted by Jack Rubin. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. <laughs> Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. Gene Crane can now be seen in the 20th Century Fox Technicolor production, Cheaper by the Dozen, with Clifton Webb and Myrna Loy. The part of Nate was played tonight by Elliot Reed. This is Frank Goss saying good night to you all until next week at the same time when James Hilton returns to present Lawrence Hausman's Victoria Regina, starring Joan Fontaine. And the week following, Teresa Wright in Sanford Salyers, Marmy the Mother of Little Women. And the week after that, Dan Wickenden's The Wayfarers on the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is KNBC, Kansas City, Missouri.